Hello and welcome back to the Kill It With Fire 2 demo. Ooh, now let's continue. Uh, space gate open. Collect data chip and return this to this terminal to activate the gate. Activate. Uh, my sensor detected an abnormal concentration of spiders within a structure known as Artist Manor, along with the human space fleet data chip. Remember that any and all paranormal anomalies have a logical explanation. Retrieve the data chip and return to the Vindicator. Space gate is now open. Proceed with caution. So what's going on now is uh, we're going to a new dimension and if you uh, reset the game afterwards the spiders do respawn. So, like there should have been markers for this. Yeah like here. It's probably up there. Alright let's go to I guess the first level? Or first world? First timeline? Family secrets. Find the stolen data chip. Burn the webs. Well, if you insist. Oops. Hey, if you're gonna kill yourself there, go for it. Get over here! So we got two more webs. Sounds like a couple spiders. Then I think it's Q. There are ten more spiders in the stage. Four weapons. Five tapes. Three challenges. Etc. Etc. I'm hoping it's linear where I don't have to keep. Okay, it's the story of Sophia. Banner. Sweet Sophia Anne Artois was quite the painter in her day. Her art brought fame and fortune. All her meals were gourmet. So when her husband told her they must move to lands afar, she answered, You will build a home that's fit for an arts war. The lady and her husband did arrive with their two boys. Sophia loved the house, but found its land and counterpoise. The woods were dark and dreary. There were swamps instead of spring. The worst of all were all the wretched, creepy, crawly things. As months went by, the artist felt she lost her inspiration. She cursed her new surroundings as the cause of her stagnation. But then it came, the one to blame, the spider that made her exclaim, and strike as she was painting, how she fought to keep from fading. It was there beneath her paint brush, the spider that Sophia crushed and scraped against her canvas turned to grime. And in her heart she felt a rush that warmed her blood and made her blush. Through wicked teeth she whispered one Get more off my time. face. It said sweet Sophia Anne Artois did lose her mind that day. At least that's what the servants and the local spiders say. She crawled beneath the floorboards, catching spiders every night. Alas, her muse did kill her. Cause of death, a spider bite.
Maybe this is another floor? There we go. Close. There we go. That's on the other side. Upgrade module. Been upgrade modules in the armory for the Vindicator to power up your equipment. Mm. All right. We'll come back to this room in a bit. Nail gun. One in the armor. Wait a minute. What's in here? Oh, uh, this one picks up items too. <laughs> That's actually a fun one.
Oh, there you are. Don't know what that one is, but it's different. Burn board to be burned. All right, let's check over here. Shoot. Okay, I could shoot those. <coughs> I reset cauldron, leave room, close door behind you, spin three times in a circle, reopen, I'm ready to try again. Spider potion bring cauldron to a simmer. Add I a newt, butterfly wing, and beetle. Heat out a boil until the potion is brown. Add a mushroom. Bring to a rolling boil until potion turns blue. Stir vigorously until potion turns orange. I a new butterfly wing and a beetle. I have newt butterfly wing and a beetle. I mean, this is the beetle. Heat to a boil until it turns brown. And add a mushroom. Or add a small mushroom. Into a rolling boil until it turns blue. Stir until potion turns. Way of the spider. If your potion explodes, you did something wrong, you use two fires to simmer, three for a boil, use the ladle to stir, never leave the ladle in the cauldron. Not all ingredients are in this room. Keep an eye out for more recipes. All the ingredients were here.
Interesting. Things. Aha! On, swing. There you go. Where did it go? Ugh, the fact they can crawl on you is a little too much. That one die or What? <clears throat> I died.
is stay in the line of sight for it I don't like that challenge as much. It's a little bit buggy. And I still don't know what's causing... Carl. Crack. Oh, I never got a list to Francis. Francis's family had a vacant vacation home. It had stood empty since the passing of his mother, Sophia. And it was that emptiness that had lured him back. Like his mother, Francis was a terribly serious artist. He worked with hammer and chisel, marble and stone, and required the utmost focus when he sculpted. And yet, unlike his mother, Francis dared not rely upon such fickle things as feelings and inspiration to move his hand. He simply committed himself to the discipline of his work, and he was very good at it. He was not very good at it. When his three daughters, Annie, Tracy, and Penelope, would come to visit, the silence of the manor was shattered by their laughter as they played their favorite game, Red Light, Green Light. Francis liked the game better back when it was called Statues. These days, he didn't like it at all. He suggested they play a new game. For every cobweb they dusted and spider they squished, he would pay them each one nickel. And the girls obeyed. One afternoon, while Francis rested his weary head, the girls spotted a spider in the upstairs hallway. They followed it into their father's studio where it crawled all the way to the top of a tower in self-sculpture. With nickels dancing in their heads, the trio wheeled a ladder to the statue and climbed until they could climb no higher. From the tallest rung, they reached out their arms with swatters in hand, hoping for a satisfying squish. Just then, their father arose and returned to his studio where, at the sight of his children teetering over his prized work, he let out a terrible shout. It gave the girls such a start that they lost their balance. The ladder wiggled, the sculpture wobbled, and as they all toppled over, Francis left with all his might to save his statue. There was, indeed, a satisfying squish. We're not leaving. So much to do. Francis's family had a no, no, Carl. When Carl heard there was a death in the family, he was overjoyed. He had always gone to great lengths to stay in touch with his relatives, no matter how distant or senile or technically unrelated, because Carl. Getting no scope. Was familiar with the age-old saying, "You can't take it with you," and he was happy to take whatever it was that they couldn't. In this case, it was a house. The last bit of evidence that Carl's family was at one point a family of status. They were renowned painters, sculptors, and photographers. Carl bought houses and rented them to short-term tenants, but this one was unlike any he had seen before. Even for an abandoned home, the interior contained an alarming abundance of cobwebs. 
What bothered Carl more, though, was that this home didn't seem abandoned at all. There were things, things that didn't quite fit. Dried meats and plants hung about the kitchen, an assortment of jars filled with elixirs. There was even an enormous cauldron resting beside a pair of ancient broomsticks. It was clear to Carl what he was dealing with. Squatters, he bellowed. If there was one thing Carl couldn't stand, it was people who thought they had some sort of right to a roof over their heads. Strangling his cell phone, he dialed a cleaning company, then a moving company, and even mustered enough strength to order a pizza. By the time the sun had set, Carl was ready for a good, undeserved rest. But he would not get it. Not that night or any night to follow. He would wake with a start to the sound of a broken grandfather clock chiming in the darkness, or to what he swore were whispers coming from the walls. Even Carl's waking hours brought him no respite, for no matter how much tidying had been done the day before, every morning brought with it more cobwebs. It was enough to drive a person mad. The last time anyone in town saw Carl, he was at the local hardware store, muttering to himself over tubs of insecticide, bug traps, and other violent delights. And as for the last time we saw him, well, that's a secret the spiders did politely ask us to keep. And that, these are long uh, stories. Oh no. When Carl heard there was a death. Belladonna. The night of the flood, Bella and I gathered all that was precious to us and tore apart our home. It would never have survived the rising waters as a cottage, but as a raft, we hoped it might be someplace new. And it did. The raft turned left and the raft turned right. It carried the both of us through the night. And when the raft did run aground, we couldn't believe what we had found. What must once have been a private, lavish home now sat covered in moss and chickweed. It looked as though it had always been there, sprouted from the earth like the rest of the forest. And that's how you know you're in the right neck of the woods. Given enough time, a good forest always welcomes you into the family. We climbed ashore, knocked on the door, when Donna heard scratching beneath the floor. We searched and found her our surprise, a family of spiders before our eyes. The spiders welcomed us into their home. The walls were adorned with mouse holes and mold, and the air was thick with the scent of tragedy. It was, in a word, perfect. During those early summer days, we would forage for fungi and weave garments from the spider silk. And in the evenings, we played the piano and sang with the creatures of the night until the night was over. The spiders here we did befriend. We wished that our time here would never end. So then I sat and I had to think, and I thought of a potion we could drink. Since drinking Bella's potion, she and I have grown closer than ever before. When we're not crawling on the walls and ceilings, we enjoy returning to our original forms to write about the adventures we've had and the stories we've heard. It's hard to believe the sort of things the spiders here have witnessed, and the plans their kind has for the future sound even more far-fetched. But if there's one thing I've learned, it's that you should never underestimate a spider. They have ways of making you regret it. Should strangers come and find our tale, take heed. The spiders here will prevail. Our time has come to bid adieu, but you're not alone. We're watching you. Yeah, I was kind of ignoring the tape recording after so long because it's just, it's such a long story it was seen. I was more interested in getting these. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh...
I don't know if this is in the right spots. Need an X for that. Look like you'd go here. There we go. All right. I should theoretically be able to go in there. Aha! Actually, could you guys kill me for a moment? I want you to reload my ammo. You guys don't want to kill me? There we go. Yes, I took damage for that, but it's okay. There we go. Um, access the bedroom and the bathroom. Access that. Just no. How many of the morts we got? Half of them. I'm sure we're going to have to come back here at some point because it looks like there's items that we don't have. And we're going to need four types of potions. Means the potion of the spider is not the only one we can make. I didn't notice it. And I know we're missing one more tape, but let's just leave it alone for now. Come back to it another time. Or I already been here for almost an hour just trying to figure that out. But with that, we're ending it here. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you all for watching. And see you next time. Bye-bye.